And I forgot to start recording. I'm recording now. There we go. So, there we go. We'll get into this. How you doing, my Vulcan? Good to have you, my friend. So, I spent the, uh, uh opened up the wrong game here. I spent the last... Oh, am I opening the right one? I think I'm opening up the right one here, actually. I spent the last few hours today, um, uh, good four or so hours on and off when I had the time earlier on. Um, uh, oh, using the most up-to-date scenario, by the way, for downfall. And here we go. It's one that I've been flirting with for a while. But I'm actually going to be doing this properly now. <laughs> I think this will be one of those, like, little series, CVs, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, but I would actually be doing it on my own channel as well. So it's going to be one of those where it, it continues, really. Uh, but I did spend quite a while, actually, just getting things set up. There's a lot to set up. It's actually really quite surprising how much there actually is to set up. Hey, Dunna Lanza, good to have you, my friend. So I haven't got everything done as of yet. I uh, didn't quite have enough time for that. But we've got a majority of things set up, really, which is quite nice. There's actually a remarkably large amount of aircraft. You wouldn't believe how many of the, uh, <laughs> how much the Allies have. They have a lot. You just never feel like you've hit the end of it. Uh, but I've gone ahead and gone through pretty much everything over here. So I do have reconnaissance, obviously, doing their thing. I've got them set up to actually run it 50% rest, and obviously then the rest being the reconnaissance at correct altitudes. Uh, patrols are done. That didn't take tremendously long. Uh, the one that took me the longest is... Let's see. Fighters takes a long time. There's 2,681 of them here that are ready. I don't know how many squadrons there are. There's a lot of squadrons, and that did take quite a long time. Um, all of these actual settings here are more or less. There's some that are still set to sweep over here, which... Uh, you clicked the wrong one, and not correct. I've got everything set up here for about 30% cap. I haven't looked at the altitudes and all the ranges, really, because obviously things will change. Uh, but essentially, we have everything set up here, so it can run along, it can function. Everybody will gain experience, and we won't have anything go catastrophically wrong. Um, I do have an invasion force actually readied at Pearl Harbor, which is good. How are you doing there, Grey Knight? Good to have you, my friend. Okay. So this did take a little while to set up. It's not exactly perfect, but it's pretty good to go. The carriers haven't had their uh, settings actually looked at as of yet. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing here is essentially, uh, well, we're going to deal with it as it is, really. And what I mean by that is we'll, we'll adjust things as we go on the fly. Uh, this task force, well, this invasion armada isn't yet uh, ready to set out. Obviously, they're going to be loaded up. We have, there's a lot of actual aspects that go alongside this, really. The only issue is that I've found over here at Pearl Harbor is we have a sincere lack of AKEs. I haven't even got to take a look at these guys yet. I know we're playing as allies, I know, right? And something that will actually continue as well, that's kind of crazy. I'd like to continue these. I know you've been asking about a downfall scenario for a while, haven't you, Vokud, so far? Yep, okay, I, I can't just keep on uh, <laughs> uh, teasing people, really. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to have something, albeit it is playing against the ally. Sorry, it is against uh, an AI. But still, that's a lot of fun. And it's an interesting time to actually take a, a uh, scenario here. It is obviously a alternate history one, which is why we don't have the entire map. Uh, it is the most up-to-date one here. Which should be good. <laughs> I feel so weird. <laughs> I know, right? So things are more or less done, like... In this, uh, in this part of the map, they're pretty much done. I think in what we might actually go ahead and do here in this uh, campaign, I'm going to try and carry this on as many turns. We're going to try and get through things and try and get a couple turns in today if we can, really. And there's a lot of things that can be done and can be done at later turns. A lot of other things can be kind of like um, neglected for a little while, per se. i tell you one thing. One thing that is my saviour is the fact that all these submarine patrol patterns are already set up. Because I tell you what, there's a lot of submarines. The US has... An ungodly, I mean the Allies have an ungodly amount of ships, but just, the amount of submarines is just unbelievable. Like, there's so, so bloody many of them. And there's still ones in port here that I haven't touched upon. There's so many of them, just so, so many amazing submarines. Absolutely amazing submarines. Yeah, it's one of the scenario takes like 10 hours. Yeah, well that's it, isn't it, really? <laughs> kind of crazy, kind of crazy. So what I'm going to do then is, we're going to concentrate on aspects and get aspects really moving. I'd like to get a turn resolution going, really. Uh, in fairness, there's not a tremendous amount that needs to be done immediately. 
we are in a good position. I've set up reconnaissance over Formosa, over every base here in Formosa. Uh, some bases over here in Tokyo. I just can't get over how many assets we have. The amount of infrastructure here, the amount of supplies you have, the amount of fuel is just ridiculous. I did not fit thing, good to have you, my man. Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to the B29-25 Super Fortress, this is kind of crazy. This is something I've never been quite good at because I've never used aircraft really like this. There's been uh, an odd time or two when I have played the Downfall campaign uh, so that was scenario. Hey, do that, Mike Bravo, good to have you. And uh, we did see what happens if you have a low altitude. The max altitude there is 33,000 feet. We're going to really feel about how to use them. But I think what we would do then is probably favor night bombings. The reason being the Japanese, they do have night fighters, but not a great deal of night fighters. It would probably reduce the accuracy of our bombardment, but we'd have to sort of get a feel for it. Uh, what we're going to be doing as well, actually. Uh, we do have three marine divisions that have been loaded up over here at Pearl Harbor, and two remarkably powerful uh, engineer units. And I, I mean remarkably powerful. It really uh, is quite shocking. I mean, 252, they think of Jesus. That's like a Japanese brigade. And it's mostly bloody combat engineers, you're like, wow. Okay, that can deal with uh, fortifications pretty nicely. Uh, you want sweeps in front if you want to use B-29s a day. Yeah, well that's it, isn't it? Yeah, night no, just makes absolutely more sense. So what I was thinking here with the three marine divisions and the uh, combat engineers is, uh, potentially we would move upon Panamashiro Jima and then potentially move down the island chain and then look towards conquering Hokkaido. That could be quite interesting, actually. Uh, a different alternative. As to whether we could achieve Kyushu and Hokkaido, perhaps. I mean, uh, Kyushu is always going to be significantly more difficult. Hokkaido could be done, though, considering the fact that there actually is a separation here between our uh, Honshu and Hokkaido, as uh, so we have that going in our favour there. We also do have the ability to start over here and work our way down. Uh, the base over here at Toyo, uh, Toyohara is actually really awesome. Like, there's resources and light industry, which is nice. There's no fuel and refineries here at this point uh, in this scenario. But actually having the size 3 port, but importantly the size 6 airfield, is very nice. I mean, that's very well protected. The Japanese wouldn't really be able to do much if we had control of the seascape and obviously control of the air. So having that would be nice. Panamish Urojima doesn't have um, anything really large, but we could build up an airfield over there. The reason why I do like Panamashiro Jima is its its range um, is quite out there. We do have the illusions over here, so I could potentially bring in different... Uh, well, I could bring in logistics along this way along here, which is fairly safe, really. I could potentially establish, like, naval search bases, etc, uh, etc. Et so I kind of favor moving down this way. The reason being a total fool is actually really nice. Uh, size 3 port. Essentially, we want to have as many different ports as we can. Uh, that are actually easily protected like this. I mean, like, even over here, uh, it's a size 1 port, but it could have an air base built up there, a Konashiri. Uh, that would be, uh, well, Kuna, Kunashiri. Uh, that would be really nice there, considering it could be built up to a size 4, sorry, size 5, I believe, or potentially larger than that. I think it can go over, but it becomes really expensive. Uh, so that'd be really nice. We have a number of different bases in the area that could be built up. Like, even over here, it's got no port, but you could still build up an airfield if you really wanted to. It's kind of like, mm, would you? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. But it's interesting not this. So, the main thing comes into now is we're going to choose what to do here. I think we'll go with uh, setting up the strikes from Luzon, uh, which would be quite good. I do have a humongous amount of carriers, but I don't have to use all my carriers immediately. And the thing is, we have an unbelievable amount of air power. An absolutely unbelievable amount of air power. We do have a naval search set up across the entire uh, map, which is nice. So we are aware what goes on and what the Japanese have, but they don't have that much. So we have this set up over here then for the sweeper to cow, which is cool. So these are our P-38 Lightnings. These guys are fantastic. You can see their altitude, sorry, their maneuverability doesn't uh, differ all that much. It does drop off beyond 32,000 feet. They do have a max altitude of 40 kp, which is pretty amazing, really. But there are a few bases in range of P-51 sweeps. Yeah, I mean, like, the uh, islands uh, out from Tokyo would be really quite interesting. So, we're going to go ahead and set up for a sweep over here, then. Uh, 20k is probably not bad, really. I could go above. 
I mean, the thing is, it comes down to how much does maneuverability really matter at this point <laughs> when you're so fast? These guys have a cruise of 290, a max speed of 414. They're really crazy. Like, they're actually really crazy. They don't have the world's greatest gun value, but they are armored and they are pretty damn durable, but they're very, very fast, which is nice. Um, I think I might go, and the fact is that they can carry, like, 2,000 pound bombs, well, two 1,000 pound. Uh, I think these guys are armor piercing bombs, I'm not too sure. Well, it says AP bombs, so yes. They're kind of crazy. They are seriously crazy. And I'm very jealous of the amount of ally, well, what the allies get. Range is great, too. So, uh, what gonna do then? I think about mm, I think about twenty five thousand feet, and this is it. I'm gonna get a feel for like the later war altitudes, really, what the AI is gonna be using as well. Uh, so if you see here, so Takao is uh, only about seven there. You want to go higher with the P 38s Well, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Really, considering that they are um, monstrous, really. And this is it. We're only dropping off bloody uh, four points of maneuverability above. <laughs> 31,000 feet. I think I might go for about 31,000 feet then. It's about 9,000 feet shy of their max. So let's see here. Not using their drop tanks. Uh, seven hexes out there to Takao. Which is not too far away. Okay. I could give them a drop tanks. But I, I don't think it makes a tremendous uh, difference. But in fairness, I do have a humongous amount of supply. It doesn't cost us that much, so I don't mind doing that. I don't mind giving them the drop tanks. They're not going to need them, but I, ah, I do that might help out with the operational losses. I'm going to set about 20% rest there. Higher could be potentially needed, we'll see. We do have a couple that are in maintenance right now. The squadron on Holvo has uh, no fatigue. Uh, yeah, pilots have a little bit of fatigue, but they're pretty much good to go. So yeah, we'll go we'll go with this sort of format. We'll set things up in over here and lose on, and bases that are close to enemy bases, and we can take it from there. So what do we have here then? We have a mosquito uh, fighter bomber. These guys are cool. I mean, I love that armament. Four Hispano cannons, twenty mils are really nice. I mean, central, yeah, that's really good, really very nice there. Not wing mounted either. No joking that when it comes to these guys, really nice. You can see they're also very fast. <laughs> Uh, these guys do drop off more at altitude. You can see there, 33,000 is their max. Uh, I mean, of course, I do have the bombs here. I like how you can have a reduced load with the rockets, which is kind of cool, actually. First time seeing that sort of thing. So I think we're, I think the way we want to take this then is... Um, I don't think we're lacking... In terms of, like, ground attack capability... So, as to whether we need fighter bombers to actually go in and uh, attack, is uh, it's one of those that really they could do it, sure. But they're going low. Might as well just continue to use them as actual fighters, really. We have enough bombers, uh, level bombers, I should say, that are carrying a significantly large bomb load. And that's still not even bad, is it, really? I mean, like, two internal 500s, uh, two external 500s, that's £2,000 a bomb. That's a, that's a lot of bombs. <laughs> that's a lot of bombs. It's kind of amazing, really. But I think I will stick with the uh, altitude, really. I think we want to sweep as much as we can. Try and shoot down as many of the Japanese aircraft as we can. So let's see. Of course, we'll change things as we uh, learn. I could go for a lower sweep to gain more of our maneuverability, but then again, it doesn't particularly matter that much. Uh, it's one of those of, yes, I'm gaining... But how much does it really matter with that maneuverability? At that sort of altitude, you're going to become under attack quite often. And this is it. It's like you're going up against, like, probably inferior aircraft, perhaps. But they're going to have a lot of those numbers. And they do have a lot of maneuverability down there. So there's no point competing. She's going to lose. Yeah, so I think what we're going to do then is, let's see. I could go to 31,000 feet, and I think I will. I go down to 7 maneuverability, but we we keep our speed, we keep... Well, this is it, we have our firepower. I think we're looking pretty good there. Don't have a huge amount of these bad boys either. Put a couple of reserves in there. So that's going to be another sweep over here to take all. Right, okay. So we have over here then, so these are New Zealanders. These are F4U1 decals there, these guys are... 
quite possibly some of the best things since sliced bread. Yeah, and that cruise is actually really quite useful actually as an escort. Uh, let's see, where do we have our level bombers in fact? Uh, so I do have bow for uh, sorry, bow fighters over here. Yeah, they're kind of thousand, but again, like four twenty mil Hispanos with the fifty cals. That's that's really cool. Gun value gets absolutely insane with the Allies. It's just it's so hard to actually comprehend how good some of the Allied aircraft are. It's crazy. Are you considering a stream about bombing the Reich sometime? You know, I really, really do want to learn how to play Bomb in the Reich. It is one of the games I really want to play. It's definitely on my list. Um, if you're not my Discord, I would absolutely appreciate any sort of advice in how to get... Well, how to play the game. But it's one of those I've really wanted to play for a while. I've done a couple streams every now and then about Bomb in the Reich. But I would like to do that. That would be something definitely on my list. Here. Yeah. Uh, Battlefighters Rock. Yeah, I mean, those four... <laughs> those quad 20 mils and the uh what was it the quad 50 cals just crackers but again this is it i don't think i need to use them as actual uh fighter bombers i might as well just use them as fighters and we do have over here then a spitfire okay yeah very nice 362 cruise is great so what we need to find out is our level bombers in this area so let's see, then I'm going to look for level bombers. But then again, I can just bring bombers here. They'll give me quite a few. Yep, there we go. So these guys are considered... Uh, I was looking at level bombers. It, sorry, it's actually light bombers. My bad. Okay. So these guys are set for port attack. Now, I don't have any information regarding anything in the ports. As far as it goes, I don't know about anything in any ports or any airfield. Uh... Uh, the question comes down to, is there anything in the port that's worthwhile hitting that can't be hit elsewhere? Eh, maybe. I think we're going to focus on the airfields. What we're going to be doing, and I did really, I did consider, and I'm still somewhat considering an invasion of Formosa. Um, Takao and a number of actual cities there on Formosa are in clear terrain, which is very interesting, actually. Pescadores would be a nice little base there to use. I don't think it mattered that much, considering we have Okinawa. It's like, yeah, what 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 do I need from there that I don't have already is uh, what I wonder. But it might be worthwhile for like a victory point sort of standpoint, but uh, we'll see. Okay, but I'm going to focus on the actual airfield attack. Now let's take a look at these guys. Uh, this is where I'm thinking that the bow, for, uh, bow fighters and stuff like that might work as escorts, perhaps, depending on their cruise speed. Or the uh, Corsairs work pretty well for escorts due to that cruise speed. Let's have a drink of coffee now. Yeah, these guys just bring some with 50 cals. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just hard to beat Okinawa. It's already got all the logistics there. I don't really gain anything from Pescadores. It would be nice to potentially have a shipyard. I considered Hong Kong, but Hong Kong's freaking urban heavy. It's not worthwhile. It's also on the land. It's also in China. Uh, so that would be quite a problem there. Right, so... Altitude is going to be an interesting thing. I think we do start off high to begin with. 25,000 is more than likely going to put us out of range of most AA guns. Uh, of course, this is 45, so there might be some AA guns in the Japanese arsenal that do have that range. I can't think of any of them right now, but maybe. Maybe. It depends on what they actually have in terms of, like, fortress. They might have some dual-purpose guns like the, uh, sort of like, you know, like the, uh, the 120, um, dual-purpose guns, maybe. Something a little bit larger than that. So I think 25 is not a bad altitude to try things out. And if anybody has any suggestions for altitude, they're open to that. But yes, we'll go with that. So I could... Um, well, really what we need to do is we need to hit multiple airfields at once. So I'm going to have these guys set. So I'm going to have all the B-24J Liberators set like this. And then I can have them uh, altered as, as I need to. So if I saw by model... Okay. I think what we do then is we hit a couple of these uh, bases. And try to, uh, really try to hit as much of Formosa as we can. Especially these larger bases. 
I might not be able to do a lot of damage, but as long as I can try and make sure there's no safe haven, that's not too bad. Your Titan Kagi. 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 Uh, understandable there. Six. Let's have Pescadora as included in that, then let's see. I'm going to need to have escorts, of course, but let's see. So, Pescadores. Oh, I've already got one. Takao. Uh, Takao. Oh, I've also got the Mitchells in here. Have I just been clicking the same squadron or something? Alright, Pescadores. Takao. Takao. Mitchells. Still pretty damn good, you know? Range is a consideration. Yeah, that's the limit of their range. Have them target that airfield over here. So I'm going to need a couple escort fighters then to cover all that. Uh, we do have some P2925s, which are targeting Taiko as well. Yeah, that bomb load is just absolutely astronomical. Just unbelievable. I mean, the range of these guys. I mean, these guys over here are the P2925s. Uh, 38, just crazy. Absolutely crazy. We have so many of them as well, which is absolutely un unbelievable. Uh, so I think what we're going to do with these guys then is like, well, let's take a look. I could start to hit some targets in Kyushu, if I wanted to. Um, Osaka is outside range, of course. Just barely. But I think we want to we wanna really focus on here, to be honest. Yeah. So let's see here. I have the A26 Invader here as well. I mean, that's a very nice bomb load. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. What's that sort of range there? 13, okay. Normal's 10. And so I'm going to have these slightly uh, lesser ranged aircraft focused on that base there. As to whether there's actually any targets in there, we don't know as of yet. We'll find out once we have the turn of soon run, of course. These guys, there's a lot of them there. Hmm. Range of actual escort is going to be some sort of consideration, but we do have like an hour over here. Uh, so I think what we'll do then is... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, Taka O needs to be hit harder. We are hitting a we're hitting these four bases over here. We'll have Okinawa hit the other bases on Formosa. Take it from there. So that's bad. Let's see. Fighters then. Corsairs. With drop tanks have about twelve hexes of range. I mean that would get us to Kagi. Um, it would get us to the closer bases, but I probably would benefit a hell of a lot more from actually having them base over here. There are some Japanese forces in this area Northern Luzon, so that's something we have to bear in mind there. So let's see. Uh, 175 AB here is pretty good to go. Um, aviation support is something that does come into consideration there. Hey, did that OCB? <laughs> yeah, I know, Brian. <laughs> I've got quite the reputation for playing the Japanese, apparently. I'm just so much more familiar with the Japanese. It's definitely a... Uh, it really is. You have to step into another... You have to put on another pair of boots to understand how to play as the Allies. Especially at this sort of time frame of 45. It's kind of crazy, really. I'm going to keep saying that just because it is. It really is compared to like what you have access to uh, as Japan, to be honest. <clears throat> okay. So I've got 115... Oh, no. Oh, wow. Okay, no. I've got 228... Aviation support, okay. I am going to have them actually build some fortifications here because there are Japanese forces in the area. I do worry about that. It's also clear terrain as well. They're likely more than more than safe, considering that we have a lot of force in the area. Uh, combat engineers over here are awesome. Very nice. Yeah, okay. 
probably worthwhile trying to engage those Japanese. They are in jungle, bro. And this is it. They're kind of just... It'd be nice to just starve them out. They do have supply, but they're going to run out of supply inevitably. So we'll wait for them to come towards us, I suppose. We have clear terrain over here, so I'm going to have fortifications built over here as well. Reason being is I don't want to make it easy for them. Well, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right. 86 aviation support here, so not as much as others, but not bad either. And that's clear terrain, so we'll build fortifications there to make it a little bit tougher. Uh, 180 over here. I'll have them build some level of fortifications, then at least we are safe from Japanese attack then. Just anything that can be reached by the Japanese, what I make sure is probably building fortifications just on the off chance. I don't think it's a problem, but you never know. Right, okay. So, you over here have 106 aviation support. San Fernando, we're looking at 90 over here. Level 7 airfield. Level 6 airfield over here. Uh, Vigan, we're looking at 64. Uh, sorry, 180 there in total. So we have more than enough air power over here. Uh, it does make you wonder why we'd need so much air power here. Obviously, well, this is it. Uh, not too long before the conquest of the Philippines, we had quite a series of large battles in this area, didn't we? So if you want to maintain there is some capability in central Philippines, like, well, central Luzon, but I'm going to have fighters shifted to the north over here. There is a small chance that they do not fly, so we do have to bear that in mind. So what I'll do then, and if, if, in all fairness, I do have a P-38 Lightning. These guys are just pretty awesome. Yeah, that range of 16 is pretty damn good for us. It does give us exactly what we need in terms of having an escort fighter, so that's very nice. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, then, is set them up as uh, escorts for the time being, and then I can actually transfer calls as up to bases that are closer to the front and make use of those guys. So I'm going to have escorts over here. We'll work things out um, as we get into it, really. That's like what really works, what doesn't work. Well, in fairness, actually, I could use them to target these bases that are further away. That'd make more sense rather than targeting ones that are closer. Like so. Right, let's see what else we have. So I have the F4. Okay. Ah. Uh... 10 hex as a range. I'm going to keep you then as probably our... I mean, let's see. Do I actually have anything that's capable of using torpedoes here? Uh, I do have an air HQ. Far East. Uh, US Air... Uh, sorry, USA Air Force. Okay. Torpedo bombers. I mean, this is it. We do have a dive bombers, which is something we rely upon more so. But... Hmm... Do I need to bother is going to be the question. We do have these guys over here as well, these sky trains. They are. And they'll come in handy at a later date, actually. I think it is worthwhile having at least something used for a cap of the actual base. I don't think we want to go with no cap. So I'm going to have the uh, F4 use over here. They can run the cap over the base. Again, it's hard to guess what altitude. I'm going to go with 15,000. Uh, it depends. I don't think they're coming in that sort of altitude, but actually, let's make about 12. Probably decent enough. So I do have the F4U1A Corsair, which does have greater range. It does have the drop tanks that take it to 12. So what I can do here, then, is put that 20% rest in. Now, 12 is obviously... Well, that's Taka O. Kagi. Have it targeted about there. Uh, that's only 10 hexes, which is uh, normal, which is nice. So that keeps them from getting too crazy, really. We do have assets over here at um, Manila. Yeah, so over here at Manila, I do have Avengers, I do have Helldivers. Okay. As for how many uh, of these guys I need is another question in itself, really. 
I'm going to have the majority of them actually on training for the time being. And the reason being, I'm going to have them like so, just until I actually have a real purpose of them. Or like a real place to actually transfer them. I don't want to have them all just out there. I'm just going to have them all sent like that for the time being. Uh, but what I'll do even is actually take a squadron and have that made available. Uh, the Avengers are... Uh, the Avengers are the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, they are what they are. I could shift them up to... You. Right, okay, I've got naval headquarters over here, but I can't use tops. It's fine. I could use them maybe as a still view, perhaps. Uh, not a bad idea for Ace to be, I guess. Uh, let's lower that by a little 50 50. And they do have a drop tank, which is actually quite nice, so they could actually go quite far there. I mean, 7 hexes of Ace W is not too bad at all. Uh, I'm going to have that 50 50 due to the fact that they are going to be doing such long range. Okay, so we'll have some dive bombers set up for light defense then. So I do have a hell divers over here, the thirty-six of the uh, thirty-six of them. Naval attack. I don't need. Well, I'm gonna have ten percent of them actually run their own search just in case. Right. So reduce. They'd be using just five hundred. We'll have them within nine then. Yeah. So what I'll do then, uh, so we have F4U4s, these guys obviously have less range, so I'll have them operate there, like so. Right, I do have Hellcats, 12 hex range, okay. Now, Hellcats. Maneuverability is actually not that bad. It's actually not that bad, I tell you. Uh, we do have the armor there. We do have durability. We also have a good number of 50 gals. Okay, speed's not bad. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do then... I mean, it comes down to really what fighters I want. It depends really on the cruise speed of the bombers. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cruise speed of the Liberator. So we'll look at 200. They actually go really well then. So we're going to have a Hellcats transfer to the front. So, Lauk, have you pronounced that, is 138 there. So I could probably fit a little bit extra on. So I'll say one Hellcats squadron. Transfer it over here to Laug. Also, we had an Ops loss. So looking at 138, so I can't afford more there, really. I can afford more over here to the party, no problem. Yeah, 228, plenty of room there. So we're going to move more of the Hellcats up there. I could use the Hell Divers to potentially hit the airfields, but eh. I'd rather use, like, longer-ranged aircraft, thankfully. So we'll have them moved up, up to you uh, parry. Right, okay. Have them run escort over these different bases then. Yeah, the normal is great then now. So they're doing Pescadores. These Hellcats are going to do Kagi. Okay. We'll work down like that. So these bow fighters here. See, um I have a couple of these guys actually on the cap here. Morn would be nice. Then again, what's their range? Their range isn't that great. I'm gonna have these guys use the actual uh, cap over the base then. 
I can use them for other purposes, of course, later on, but that's not too bad. Yeah, I have PP8s over here. Uh, they're sweeping over to Kao. They're sweeping there as well. I actually have them sweep. Well... I guess sweep here then, a little bit closer, they do have lesser range. Uh, well, actually, they're well within their range, but it makes sense to have a sweep there as well. Right, so Carl Zares here. 182 crews. They'd actually suffer a little bit trying to keep up. These guys are pretty much perfect for that. Right. So I think, well, oh, actually, I do have the uh, drop tanks I could use. Hmm. Let's see. I'll have them run cap over the base. Just need to need to make sure we've got uh, fighters over every every base that we're going to be hitting there. Oh wow, Vino, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I wish I got those bits, but unfortunately not. But hey, Slippery appreciates it. But glad you enjoyed the stream, my friend. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking at range of not much. <laughs> range of not much, sounds about right. These guys are obviously fantastic for cap. Well, what I'll do even is have them set to 12 as well. I'll have them set for like... Uh, let's call it 1. Have them like so. Let them. They, can, they, they should be like a cap lead then perhaps. What else do I have here then? So we have mosquitoes, we have the bow fighters. Uh, range is sufficient for the closer bases, I guess, so I might as well have them used if we can. What's that cruise? 249, but a little bit too fast, but. Uh, I could even potentially have them in uh, their own attack roll, but. Uh, I'll go for a sweep with them, I guess. Hmm, okay, not as much altitude there. Yeah, not exactly great altitude. Ah, well. Sweep over there, then. Right, so we are getting there now. There's obviously a lot of ground forces over here in Luzon, but we do have time to organize them as we need to. So if I take a look over here then, I do have the F4Us here. Yeah, they're in that. Okay, they're in that. So... I think that would about do it for fighters. I do have Hellcats that I haven't transferred. Uh, do I have any additional fighters in the area? Right. What the hell are these guys? These are medium bombers. Okay. So many aircraft to organize. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. More liberators here. Okay. Aircraft over here, then. Oh, so we do have the oil and refineries over here. That's nice. That actually does help us out. Uh, Bella Pappen, yep, shh, looking good, okay, cool feel. Have him just run the train, but I guess. That's such a big ass tail, I love it. Absolutely amazing. Okay. I could potentially use them to bomb uh, Palembang, but I don't think it really does me any, any good, to be honest. Interested ones. Um. Hmm. I don't have a huge amount of them either. That radar is pretty cool. They don't have that well, their altitude's not that good. 
They're an interesting aircraft. Uh, could anybody actually look up the actual uh, history of the PB4Y2 privateer? Actually, that'd be kind of cool. Um, maybe might be useful for Ace, do you? <laughs> I don't know. It's freaky big ass guy. <laughs> Heavy, uh, heavy bomb is just kind of crazy in fact. Uh, <laughs> that's great. And this is it. Like, even their range is still awesome. It's just, it's nothing compared to, like, other aircraft out there. Okay. I think what I'll do then is just have them use the training for the time being. So I can't think of using them, really. Right. So, I do have more F-41Ds over here. Uh, these guys have a standard of seven, which is not a whole lot, frankly. Got the Mariners over here, okay. Uh, the one A's are good, they have that range I need. Eight, still not too bad, is it? Oh yeah, there we go with the drop tanks, so that's what I need. So, I'm going to have them shifted up over here to Pari. Right, a little bit of damage there. Um, again, gonna have to double check, make sure I've got escort over every base now. Bridge looking decent enough. Got some wildcats. Okay. So we have some Mitchells over here. I'm just gonna have them train because I can't use them for anything much right now. What are these guys like? Oh, hell yes. Okay. These guys are the guys I need. Should have kept the other Corsairs here, actually. Uh, so we'll have them transferred to Pari. And uh, we do have some actual Wildcats there that can actually run cap over that base. Yeah, these guys are the guys we need. Heck yeah. That is some range and a half. Yeah, 650 cals. Armoured. Uh, Cruise is not bad, actually. It's not exactly what I need, but it's not bad. We shouldn't really have problems due to the fact that they are out here uh, quite some distance in front of the actual air bases, so it should actually uh, not have too much in the way of problem. uh, problems. Range is great. Okay, so we should have every base covered there from this side. Now, uh, might just consider moving on to other islands to make sure we can get through this. There's a whole lot to do. There's a lot to set up here. We are going to have to just neglect some aspects. Uh, we'll focus over here on Okinawa, but we are going to be knocking out foremost, so that's going to be the target here first and foremost. So let's take a look then. I'm going to get the actual escort. I'm going to get the fighters set up first. That makes more sense. So let's take a look at what we have. So, I do have a bunch of P-58s over here, we have a bunch of Thunderbolts and P-51s and nothing cool. So, what we'll do then is we'll have sweep set up and, uh, let's see. Actually, I'll go with the bombers first, we'll get the bombers set up and then we can work things out from there, really. Right, so we have Liberators, a whole, whole hell of a lot of Liberators. Like a beautiful amount. I'm gonna hit every base on the island. I'd rather hit every base, a little bit, than to hit one base really hard. The reason for that is, uh, it sounds daft actually when you think about it, well it sounds daft when you say it, uh, but the reason for that is it gives him, uh, gives the uh, Japanese no ability, uh, no, <coughs> no air base is safe essentially, no air base is safe. And that's what's quite good. God damn it. Okay. Essentially, carpet bombing a uh, island here. 200 miles per hour cruise speed. 230. Oh, that's for the Mitchell, however. Liberator will look at 200 as well, so they'll work well together there. Though, I might just go ahead here. 
considering using it for a training squadron, but then again, we might as well use it. And what I can do then is actually use it to hit a uh, base potentially close to the vicinity. Yeah, like these bases over here, like uh, Amami, Oshima. Uh, we do want to knock out the airfields there too as well. The reason being we don't want to have them as potential threats. But then again, that's kind of misusing a heavy bomber, isn't it? It has all that range. Why use it to hit something that other aircraft could hit? Uh, let's see. Yeah, hit that base a little bit harder then. Okay. So that's the heavy bomber setup. Medium bombers, yeah, you can see we have the medium bombers here. Uh, so the medium bombers still have pretty damn good range, in all honesty. And they've got 12 hexes, which is, yep, yeah, enough to hit the majority of the island there. It might be worthwhile to knock out these island's uh, airfields as well, perhaps. But then again, I could always use a Mami Oshima. Uh, she's really quite close by. That would be a nice island to take. Uh, to just bring us that a little bit closer. It is wooded rough terrain, however, which is, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, as one would say, uh, rough terrain. <laughs> so, yeah, it would be a little bit uh, a problem. A bit of a problem to try and take that. There's only two units here, apparently. Any bases we could take would be nice. I mean, all these bases over here would have to be seized to be sure of safety. Um, I might knock out that base. But we might just concentrate on bases over here. I mean, these are well within range. So we'll concentrate on bases over here, then. Might as well go for that. So B24Hs, you've got 10. Yeah, we'll concentrate on... Uh, concentrate on Taihoku. Right, there we go. These are... So this is the B25Hs, we're going to have the B25J11s. Um, again, they have similar range, yeah, pretty much the same range there, okay. Hmm. I could hit the base over here, but it's reduced range. I might as well hit uh, Taihoku, uh, especially hard. Alright, there we go. No light bombers here, okay. How about dive bombers? No dive bombers, okay. Fighters, then let's see. So these guys are set up over here, then. So I do have a lightning. So I'm gonna have a lightning that's actually set to sweep. Actually, I'm gonna rebuild that. And uh, go to 21. I could go to 40, to be honest, but we'll go to 31 just to get that little bit more maneuverability. Give them our dropper tanker, tanker rule. Right, divide them. Sweep over Taihoku. There we go. No safe harbor in the storm. So I do have these Warhawks over here. <laughs> these are badass looking Warhawks. They don't have a lot in the way of range, however. So they make pretty damn good um, escorts over the base. Most of me. P-47s are pretty damn good. Yeah, 231 crews, that's fine. Okay. Range is absolutely amazing as well. I mean, bloody hell. Unbelievable amount of range there. Really very nice. Yeah, but those 850 cows are just great. <laughs> Absolutely great. Uh, what I'm going to do then is actually have that unit rebuild. Um, I may potentially come under attack here, so that's something I do have to bear in mind, in fairness. Hmm. I do need to issue, uh, issue security here. So what, then again, I do have. We have other aircraft. I could just bump the, uh, I could always have a little bit of a like, cap as well, actually, in fairness. Nah, no point. Be fine. Have these guys used as escorts. Okay. Uh, 
I will not even just divide this unit. We do have uh, aircraft of the other base as well, so at least we have that. Okay, so we do have reconnaissance that's targeted over here, then that's good. Okay. Right, they're sweeping. If I click the right base here. <laughs> I just felt really, really very similar. Oh, that's Naha. Oh, I haven't done this base, okay. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I thought I was doing this base. Nago, rather than Naha. Naha, they say. Right, yeah. It's incredible. It's just crazy how much we have here. I'm gonna keep saying that, but it really is. Uh, so let's see then. Hmm. 290 cruise is amazing. Right, here we go. Have them focused on the big bases. Those are likely to have resistance. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of people. To have. Yeah, it's a lot of them. Whole, whole bunch of them. These P 51s, then. 249 crews. Um. Well, this is it. I might as well have the. Uh, Your cruise is 231. So I'd be better off having you then as the escort. Have you divided like so? Okay. I'm going to have this squadron actually run escort over the base. Well, cap over the base. Just for the time being, until we actually get an idea of how uh, Japanese air power looks in the area. Essentially, we don't want to have any bases that are susceptible to attack. It does really help out there, <laughs> MFT2. I'm not going to have too much in the way of op sources with these guys, considering that they don't really fly very far. Right, we're going down. So looking pretty decent there. So that's the fighter setup. Yeah, there's no bombers here. We do have medium bombers, however. Uh, a whole hell of a lot of A26 invaders. Oh god, so many of these guys. Okay. No, we could hit a Mami or Shima. In fairness, I can hit these airfields and I can rebuild them, so it doesn't particularly matter that much. But I'm going to concentrate over here, really, until we have things set up for that. They do have the range. So we'll really hit uh, Taihoku very, very hard. Ooh, that altitude is a bit of a funny problem there. Hmm. Just causes a little bit of a problem there. Huh? Okay. Uh, not that it matters that much, but they might go in unescorted. Uh, it's a bit of a problem there. Hmm. I think I'll have them take on their Mami Oshima then.
Got to 24. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> I do Right, but I'll do that. Right, so we've got Okinawa set up there. We don't have the naval assets actually set up here. And considering the bloody fact that we have all this here is absolutely insane. Yeah, I'm pretty damn insane. Hmm. I think probably what we'll do then is we'll get the turn going, considering it's been nearly an hour here, and we're just going through the aircraft. This is what takes so long. It definitely is one of those situations like, as we said earlier, it can take <laughs> quite a number of hours to get things set up. So, we'll get things moving. What I'll do then is actually have these assets left here. So what do I have in the port over here then? Couple destroyers over here, we'll put them into the actual force. A uh, couple APDs to work with, AOs, we have auxiliaries there, we do have mines and patrols, okay. Does the base actually have mines? Uh, it's a lot of naval support. Do we actually have a tender for said mines if I do deploy them? Uh, mine sweepers, mine layers. Yard mine sweeper. I don't have mine uh, tenders. Uh, don't think it much matters. Work does even such great a few ASW task forces then actually. I don't think it matters that much considering I don't. Well, then again, no, it does matter, doesn't it? Consistently. Okay. Oh yeah, these guys are amazing here. Patrol frigates. There we go. Set up a couple more of those bad boys. So I do have the actual escort carriers in the area as well. Right, let's go with just patrol. Right, there we go. Uh, what we need to do then is actually take a look at where carriers are. That's going to be a good idea. I don't think I have any actual task forces uh, within range of Japan or Japanese bases, actually. Let's go ahead and take a look then. So, where are our air ops? So, the only one I have then is the one I built over here, which is the air combat one, which is Saratoga, etc. So, at least something to work with there. I think the majority of carriers are in port still. Yeah, we have all these guys over here at Guam. Okay. I'm going to leave them as they are for the time being, considering we have a lot to do here. We'll have them made available then uh, uh, afterwards, really. Let's see, over here at Singapore. Need to make sure I've got the cap set up here. Uh, these guys. Yeah, I don't think it would attack. I don't think the Allies. Uh, I don't think the Japanese would attack here, but you never know. Uh, probably not a bad idea just to actually have it set up just in case. Right. Skeeters are in reconnaissance, okay. P 51s here are in reconnaissance. Sorry, running cap. Okay. Do have some liberators over here. I'm gonna have them actually just stood down for training for the time being, actually. So I have field attack. And having pilots trained doesn't uh, hurt at all, to be honest. 
Right, Spitfires. Right, so we'll have our cap set up over there then. Now, what do I actually have in the port here? Mm, bunch of AMs, actually, which is interesting. Okay. I do have some heavy AA. Nice, okay. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm going to increase the amount of cap here. Because it is in an interesting position, isn't it? I do worry about that. Maneuverability is 27 there. <laughs> now we're going to see explosions, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we will, we will. Okay, we'll go with that. See, that's the issue, isn't it? Just the amount of time here. Uh, so what I'm going to do then is neglect the carries for the time being. Now, I do have... Uh, well, actually, I could do with hitting Chichijima. Chichijima. Well, actually, I'll set up cap over here at this base and then I don't need to worry about it. Right. Oh, uh, we have cap set up. Not potentially perfectly, but it does still uh, serve a job there. Yeah, so a lot of us things. That's a whole lot of, uh, lot of stuff there. So, what do I have here? Heavy bombers. I have these guys. These guys are very cool, actually. I really love that tail. Really awesome. But they don't have that much in the way of range. They do have potentially 20 hex range. Um, so, in fear they could actually hit Tokyo. It's just... Yeah, they don't have the altitude. They could do it at night, to be fair. They do have radar. Could do it at night, but I think what we might do here, just to get things moving, is we'll, uh, we'll deal with Tokyo and hitting Japanese bases, I think probably next. So what I'm going to have them do, then, is have them set over here. Have them set to the rest of the time being. Uh, we'll have them set for night. Probably night is what they were meant to do, really. So I'm going to have all the privateers set like this for the time being. Yep. Just have them rest and made available. Okay. Mitchells. We'll have these guys set for a uh, attack. Go for 20,000 feet. Okay. Hell dives I'll have set fun. Like so. Right out. Right, we'll go down. It's not perfect. Let me double check these guys again. Uh, give them a bit of rest. Uh, so it's not perfect, but it'll do for the time being. I just want to get things moving for the uh, moment. Yep, they're all running there. Okay. So. Yeah, so, so many of them. So, so many. Hmm. Interesting to see 15,000 feet there for the night attack. Probably not a bad idea. I think, actually, yeah, go on then. We'll set it up for the night attack then. So I've got the city attack here. Now, do I want to burn this city? Uh, airfield is... Pr I mean, this is it really, isn't it? Hmm. The airfield is going to be inevitably damaged. Uh, sorry, repaired. I think we'll set it up for the actual city attack then. Oh, first one doesn't have a night phase. Right, that's good to know then. So we'll have them all set for rest. Good to know, good to know. Uh, yes, the cell, uh, yes, uh, there are cells on, usually around about Christmas time, actually, so that's always a good time to look. Right, let's see. Have them set up over here, then. We'll have them just rest for the time being. Yeah, it's really awesome to get the game when it does, of course, go on uh, sale. Definitely worthwhile doing. 
Right, we'll go like that. We'll get them just on a rest uh, for the time being, and then we'll get things moving. Uh, Guam over here as well. There's probably a whole lot of things I've missed out here, but there's simply so much to manage in the first turn. Uh, it is pretty damn overwhelming. But we'll be able to work on things. There's something that we'll work on over time, really. Uh, air for attack. Right. We'll deal with one, uh, one issue at a time, actually. <laughs> Right, very good. Me for the twos. Right, okay, but I'll do. Then I'll do for the time being. Then, uh, with my country's currency, it was still a fuck ton. <laughs> oh, shouldn't swear. Um, wow, that's really amazing. Right, we'll go with that then. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it here. It's definitely not perfect really a lot of things that we should have had done as well but it's just there's so much to do this is what makes this game great but if you do enjoy that sort of organization you're gonna really enjoy it really because it's just so much but once you do get the ball rolling it does really the amount that you have to do does diminish quite significantly i should check on the actual cars at okinawa just quickly before we do actually set off actually make that an air combat and just on the off chance Yeah, probably so. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, that is a good point, actually, regarding the first turn for the Allies. Okay. We'll have it said like so, then. Uh. So, all carry fights in the hex. Just go with that for the time being. We can obviously, like, alter that as we need to. Um, I'll have them run the... Uh, tent search as well, then, uh. Okay, yep. Carry a torpedo bombers. Uh, probably got dive bombers on here somewhere. Such a hodgepodge when it comes to like the actual escort carriers. It's so much fun. I don't think we have any dive bombers here actually. I'll tell you what actually I can do here. Carrier aircraft. Yep, that's fall. Night fighters here. Actually, yes, they are night fighters, okay. Right, we'll go with that then. Quickly save and then we'll go ahead and get the turn going then. Probably bored a few people to death, but this is just simply how the game is. <laughs> and that's it unapologetic, but it's great. Let's see. Uh, as for it being on Steam, I don't know. I don't know why it is, and I don't know what... I don't know anything about that. Um, it would be cool if it was. It would make it easier for people to get access to it. I, I agree there. Uh, we'll see. Ideally, we don't have anything just blow up, but we should be a while. Ah, should be alright. Should be a while before we have things blow up on our side. One would hope so, anyway. Okay. And this is it. We'll get reconnaissance over bases and work out really what we want to hit. Uh, I mean, I might concentrate on uh, Osaka, Kyoto. The reason being, uh, well, there's a lot of industry. I think there's about twice as much heavy industry at uh, Osaka um, as there is as, well, at Tokyo. 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 Okay. I don't imagine we're going to see much of the way of Japanese naval assets around here. I think the majority of the Japanese uh, <laughs> assets that do remain probably on the other side of Japan. Right, so we've seen Hastings K4s, G4, yeah, so okay, good idea, set up the cap there. That's a good thing there. Marriage report in sight, in, yeah, you can see that's blue, so that's obviously an incorrect sight in there. Okay, moving to the airstrikes. Right, so do you see the P for the eight minute? Do 
Do let me know if the game's actually a little bit loud. It sounds a little bit loud today, but we'll see. So we are seeing here Key 44 to see Tojo's... Uh, that's interesting, actually, regarding the altitude there. Hmm. Okay. So you have the 24th Sentai over here, then. Intercepted now. Yeah, 34,000 feet. I was thinking like they're pretty high up. And uh, we do shoot down six of them. We do have one. Uh, it's a bit loud, that's fine. I can go ahead and just quickly change that out. Uh, it's going to be a moment. And I'll edit that. Uno momento. Okay. I've got about half volume. That should be fine. Oh, we swept at 31,000, didn't we? Yeah, they'll be sweeping at 31,000 feet. Is it a sweep mission? Air attack. Okay. Yeah, these are sweeps, so we have thunderstorms over there. Yep, sweeping at 31. Ah, uh, reports over here are interesting. Kuroshima. Okay, so we do have some zeros to finish here, Aces and Mates. I'm very much looking forward to having these guys in my own campaigns. Actually, the Aces and Mates could be great news. I've got an armored zero, they're a zero uh, with less maneuverability, but they do have greater firepower, although the firepower is actually less accurate due to them being a uh, wing mounted cannon. Uh, yeah, I think it's wing mounted cannon, wing mounted uh, HMGs, but still better. Uh, not so much in 45, really. As you can see, they get an ass kind of handed to them. But then again, this is the, uh, the issue as well of uh, degradation of the pilots. The aircraft obviously being, uh, well, it's a bit difficult for them <laughs> to go up against something like this. The altitude, altitude is insane, speed is insane. Okay, so we'll move on forward here then. Okay, so 9 0 shot down. Swim's looking pretty good so far. So we have two 38s against uh, a couple of key 44s. Let's see how they do. One gets through there, so it looks like one was shot down, but we take down some Tojos with us. Okay, so we have some Rexes over here. These guys are pretty cool. Uh, Rex or George? They're stiffer competition than the key 44 Tojos, uh, two Cs, and the Aces of Apes. These guys are stiffer competition. We have one shot down there. The attrition rates are just... They do not favor the Japanese in any way. <laughs> because we have so many of these fighters. I mean, truth, the Japanese will have uh, fighters being produced. It's just, yeah. Okay, so we actually do have a raid coming in here. BC sent to a Jills. Uh, very mixed bag here. Some Hellcats, some Wildhawk, uh, Warhawks, some Mustangs, some P-47s there. Uh, so yeah, they're going to have their fudge pushed in here. Uh, so we do see elements breaking off the attack. Not too surprising. You, you really need a whole significant amount of air power to be able to break through here to uh, really cause damage to any of our airfields or indeed uh, ports. So yeah, it's a good, uh, good drive on the Japanese though. That's fine after moving here actually. Oh yeah, those B6 and 2s are in for a world of pain right now. <laughs> An absolute world of pain. I do not feel bad for them. They had it coming if they carried on coming to attack here. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty wrong. They definitely did not have a chance there. Yep, looks like it was pretty much wiped out there. Ooh, Batan is an island I forgot about, actually. But I don't think I actually had any aircraft here at Batan. Uh, so, okay, uh, ground attack. Okay, <laughs> 12 Marine Defense Battalion. Okay, so we do have some cap over here, but uh, good job we have some cap. Not enough cap, actually, but then again, these are just uh, bombers. 
Uh, we do have some Corsairs that ideally will show up. Spitfires, yeah, okay. Well, this is it. Ideally, we'll have more Cap joining us. Uh, Spitfires are doing a real good job, though. Holy moly. Yeah, but elements are joining in. Right. Uh, wish we had more fighters here, actually. Right. He had not of Cappy says. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Now we've got four in here. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, the poor, poor key body eight <laughs> won't be. <laughs> The GM uh, Frigate is very nice, though. It's a very nice aircraft. It's just this, is it? They're just not capable of this point in time. But then again, this is it. Even earlier in the war, they might have been able to get through, potentially, against some sort of opposition, but... Okay, here we go. Spitfire's coming in. Yeah, but you always need to have your bombers esc uh, escorted, no matter what, really. Because they have a greater, much, much greater chance of making it through. I like how there's this cap coming in here, but like, uh, Yorta, no Yorta, no Yorta. It's like good cop, bad cop. A Corsair, a Spitfire, a Lily, and a uh, Betty walk into a bar. <laughs> oh, this is awful. Let's see, do any of them make it through? Wow, okay, so one key 48 make it through, uh, seven G4 M3s make it through there. Uh, I do have an aircraft actually destroyed on the ground. We do have a Hellcat destroyed on the ground. Uh, but that cost them... That was not worthwhile for them. 11 destroyed there, 14 destroyed there. Uh, not worthwhile for... A little bit of damage there. Not worthwhile for them. Ah, here we go. Yes, we do have attacks over here on Singapore. On escorted bombers with draw. Except these guys who are... Gonna pay for it. Oh yeah, they pay for it. Right, what do we have here, Vince? We do have some escorts. Oh, Helen. Nice, you don't see them uh, all too often. So the key for the free four Oscar, we've got the Aces and Eight. This is it, in a sort of situation where there is nearly equal numbers, they don't do too bad. But this is it, you've got to have your fighters to try and engage the enemy fighters, keep your bombers alive. It's not going to do it for them. Yeah, as you can see here, the Helen is going to have a bad day right now. But they're a significantly better Japanese bomber, I'm looking forward to having them myself, really. I think they are armoured, if I recall. I, uh, I think so. I think they have greater range than the Sally. And I, I think they're armoured. I can't recall if they're armoured. I think they're armoured. But on support, they're going to Yeah, they're going to have a bad time. Well, three of them still make it through, though. So not too bad. Damage inflicted on them by Flak. Uh, so yeah, you can see there. But they got a couple through. So we're hitting uh, Chichijima over here. Only 20 minutes of through in this first round. Now, I didn't expect them to actually be uh, aircraft over here at Chichijima. But you never know, it's always worthwhile to make sure you knock out a base just on the off chance that there are enemy aircraft here. You don't want to give them an opportunity to allow it, really. And frankly, if we destroy the base, I can re I can repair the base pretty quick. Hell dives going in there, it's interesting. Okay, so we do have Mitchells coming in here. Yeah, 32 Thunderbolts there. 25 Mitchells. Mm -hmm. Good luck with that one, my friend.
Okay, so you can imagine that wind. Uh, <laughs> actually, not many runway hits there. Oh well. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> so we have the B-24 Liberator coming in here. Liberators have got a better on escorted, but no opposition anyway, so that's not too bad. And now they will be more efficient due to the fact that there is no opposition here, which is very nice. Yeah, okay, a few more hits there. We're not hitting any one particular base uh, especially hard. I mean, Tai Hoku is going to be hit especially hard, considering the amount of Mitchells we're sending against it. But I think it is still worthwhile to hit every base. The reason being that there's no, there's no escape for Japanese aircraft. You can potentially hit everywhere and do damage. Well, we're 25,000 feet initially. And hey, you saw me putting those 25s in there, you could have changed them at any point. I'm just not familiar with scenario. Also, can alter the altitude here, no problem. Always worth to go too high initially if never could work it down. Yeah, high durability and armor. <laughs> All things we're not used to. Uh, so, do see some key body. Uh, Key 43 falls over here. Okay. Yeah, not just the durability, not just the armor, but they actually have a defensive firepower as well. <laughs> Which is. They're just brilliant. They're really nice. Oh, and again, the uh, 25's not... Eh, we're not getting that much of the way it hits, but... Eh, we're not taking that much of the way of losses then either. <laughs> but we'll lower the altitude. Definitely go ahead and lower that. Okay. Yeah, just one shot down, better with lightnings. Okay. I don't like the uh, Liberators coming on in an es un es uh, unescorted. But they're just flying by anyway. Liberator takes no prisoner. He's here to liberate. Okay, he's in a few of the aircraft there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they just had no chance there. Not bad there on the uh, hits. Super Fortress is coming in. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> Zipper Watch is like, goodbye. Oh, wow, he actually took one of them out there with the flag. That's impressive. I assume we're actually at 25 as well. I do wonder which gun uh, they actually have range with them. That's something I'd have to take a look into. There we go. Encouraging results so far. Most certainly uh, heckling that airfield. Oh, 
Oh, wow. That's very effective, then. I mean, would have had more results like this, but ah, we'll alter the settings as we go into the next turn, then. But that was really very successful there. Then again, each of them has 20 bombs. No freaking wonder. That's a lot of bombs. That's <laughs> a, it's a lot of bombs. Might not go so well for the A26s over here. They still have defensive armor, so they should be able to make it through. Have a couple shot down. Yeah. Not enough in the wave numbers there. And these guys can take uh, a decent, uh, decent hit there. Speed that up then. 20 go free. It's only had the one shot down. Not too bad. Okay. Couple damage there. A little bit of damage on the runway. Okay. Ah, these guys actually have an opportunity now to attack. results here so far. I think we can definitely see that there are a uh, concentration of aircraft over here at Tech Ball. It you know, reminds me of a game I played when I was much younger. Uh, what was it now? Um, was it Army Men? It might have been Army Men. There was like <laughs> the one where you literally played as like the green soldiers, the like green Army Men and stuff like that. I was it like Sarge's? It might have been Army Men, Sarge's Hero, something like that. Sarge's Heroes. I, I, I can't recall. I think it was that one. Or, it, or maybe was it one of the first. Uh, Actually, it might have been one of the first Call of Duties. I think it was the first Call of, one of the first Call of Duties, actually, where you're in a uh, B-17, I think, or something like that, and you've got, you're, like, in control of the actual turrets. It might have been, oh, I, I don't know, actually. But Army Men was amazing. Really, really loved that game. That game was amazing. Was it Army Men 2? Oh, God, that was an awesome thing. Like when you're on the beach as you're running around, like flamethrower, you just see all these dudes just constantly dying. You're like, oh, my God, this is, like... This is amazing! God, I miss that game. Yeah, yeah. Probably Call of Duty. Probably Call of Duty. Okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, United Defensive there. Ooh, they're actually coming in for the ships here. I'm actually pretty impressed they made it through, considering they actually have cap over the, um... Yeah. Ah. Impressive. They're most certainly screwed though. Yeah. No prisoners taken. <laughs> I mean, that's 850 cows. I mean, that's probably 650 cows. 
just it's just 50 cows and everything. Okay. Yeah, they were not going to get through that. I'm glad we put the cap up there. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I did that. Wait, United Offensive? Was United Offensive, like, the, uh, the name of the game? You're in a B-17 in nice one. Wait, one? <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty cool. That's actually something to take a look at there. When was the B-17 first actually used, uh, well, oh, Call of Duty United Defense? Is that what the game uh, was actually originally called? And I can't remember. I think the second one was Big Red One, was it? Big Red One? Might have been. God, it's been a few years, hasn't it? Okay. The real I go for it here. Okay. Yep, pretty accessible there. Oh, wow. How are Helen's going through Tanaha? <laughs> What's going on with the gap there? That was a little bit confusing. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused. We definitely set a cap there, so that's very intriguing. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't hit everything. <laughs> Maybe we might have had them a little bit too uh, stacked on something. Uh, mosquitoes coming in over here. Yeah, these sweeps are a little bit late, guys. A little bit late. Okay, there we go. That was the AM face. <laughs> That's the best part. Oh man, we are shooting down a lot of our Tasis K4s though. Yeah, so the battle fight, uh, uh, it's okay. Yeah, they did well. They did well. Can't complain about that. Ooh, okay. I feel bad for those guys. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, I'm glad we've seen a cap here, but it does actually concern me regarding the fact that uh, uh, we seem to be lacking a cap in Naha for some odd reason. I mean, that is concerning, actually. I mean, we do have cap actually set from the carriers, so I'm not that sure there. I know there is a Malastra actually having carriers in coastal houses, but uh, that's still strange. Yeah, uh, we haven't had any bad luck so far. Which is pretty typical. I mean, that's pretty much how my Top of the Bombers operates as well. <laughs> They'll hit everything but the thing you want. suspected submarine, but I'm actually sending four subs out from Pearl Harbor, so it should be fine. I'm really glad they're not actually hitting Naha right now, considering Naha is seriously suspect there. Your fuck goes Naha. They're thrown in a lot there. Oh wow. They have something against Batan Island, or Batan. You know what, actually? I heard it actually uh, pronounced as Batan Island, and I'm like, oh, well, actually, Batan Island makes sense, actually. I've always been saying Batan. <laughs> it's actually probably Batan. And they're actually doing quite a number on Batan Island, but then again, I don't think I actually have anything there anyway. Holy moly, that's a long range uh, attack. <laughs> From Canton to Chongqing. Okay. <laughs> oh, did he read it? That's really hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious, though, wow. Okay, yep, there we go. Size 1 fortifications on all those guys. Nice. I've actually seen a little bit of Japanese shipping out there, but this is it. We actually have a little bit more information to work with now, which is excellent day. I do wonder what they have down here. Probably like PT boats or just uh, escorts of some nature. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually take... I'm going to actually save it here just in case. And we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at the actual uh, results from that. But yeah, we know that we can actually reduce the altitudes now. Uh, we obviously hit uh, their numbers over for the most. Uh, 
Let's see, 910, 910. T5F Thunderstorms was in grade 6, 8. 910, uh, 910. Okay. Let's see. So, 48, sorry, no, 47, 48. <laughs> yeah, 47, key 48 there. Uh, 47. Uh, key 43 seems to be a thing there for the 47s. 30G4 M3As. 28 A6 M8s. Yeah, not bad. Uh, around 12 P38s. Not a bad day, really. Lots of aircraft there. Lots of models of aircraft, in fact. So we're looking at 32 Allied losses here today for 236 Japanese losses today. And quite considerable numbers there, really. Quite considerable numbers. Now, as for how many of them... Hmm. Let's see. Ground losses. Actually, not much in the way of ground losses. Let's see. Ops losses. Uh, yeah, just majority out of air, really. Mm hmm. Okay. I don't think we actually had any ship losses here. Yes, there are no ship losses then. Okay. Right. What do we have over here, then? Huh. Apparently landing barges in there is interesting. That is intriguing, actually. I wonder if they're actually trying to move some engineers out here. That's not possibly... I don't know, actually. Or evacuated? I mean, there's no airfield, but there can be no airfield. I mean, there could be an airfield, but it'd take a ridiculous amount of what was you actually gain from that. But we did actually have reports about this, actually. Interesting. 25 says maybe movement supply. It just doesn't seem like something you'd really want to do. Yeah, that's bizarre. Hmm. Yeah, it makes sense considering that there's literally uh, uh, no airfield there. <laughs> Not a great place. Oh, so there is a air. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I love the guy's smile as well. That's superb. <laughs> I like that. I do like that a lot. I like it. Okay. And this is like an alternate history scenario, so it does make me wonder how the Chinese were actually feeling the situation, really. Right, then. So, Palambang. A decent number, really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> What I love is that uh, the city isn't even here. That's what I really like. They were looking. They were looking. And they surely found. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what happened over here at Nahalvin. Did we forget to have a cap? We might have forgotten to have a cap. In our confusion between bases. So it looks like that was the case there. Actually, no. We did have a cap. Yeah, they... they what? Yeah, there's a cap. Where the hell were they? <laughs> what the hell? Huh. Have the satisfaction of destroying the panel back all fields. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. What did they have here? Oh, they've got full use of them. That's really nice. Man, it'd be so nice to actually capture Palin and have it in perfect condition. That'd be amazing there. I mean, we actually did well in our Deadman game by actually having uh, Bella Papinus and Melinda captured intact. That was really nice. Like, mwah, chef's kiss. That was very nice. Right, so we know they can actually lower the altitude. At least we know what's going on over here. That's a lot of submarines there. Look at all those submarines. Right, yo. Hmm. I will go ahead. Actually, we'll go ahead and check on the magic. Oh, God, the allies get so much. <laughs> It's like for Japanese, and for the Japanese, you get like, what, five reports, something like that, and they really don't tell you that much anyway. Okay, let's see here. So, 122nd Independent Mixed Brigade. Let's see, is there anything of uh, note here? Four flees located at track. You'd have to really... I'm going to take a... A notepad or something out. Um, 
I mean, defenders can actually have these put into, like, the uh, tracker. That definitely helps out. Yeah, signal intelligence is amazing. Wish I had that. Um... Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. The fact that we can even see what type of uh, landed barge over here. God, that's wooden. Ah, oh, we have Thanos. Very nice. Hmm. That was interesting. Oh, these guys are upgraded over here at LA. Right. Manners moved ashore. Oh, that's down here, isn't it? Okay. That base is indeed a supply boat. In fact, a lot of these bases are. What do they complain about here? Oh, supply, right. So that'd be something that we'd have to do here is to keep these bases supplied. They'd not need a lot, to be honest. Like, uh, a thousand or two thousand uh, would pretty much keep them going for a while. Okay. What do we have in terms of... Task forces, we're only seeing here. What do we see in Portland? Some empty bees there. That's a lot of fighters. Though Kyoto is actually looking, uh, well, Osaka, Osaka, uh, Kyoto is looking actually relatively undefended there, in comparison to Tokyo. Hmm. Kagoshima? Not that many. So let's see then, what damage did we inflict? We didn't inflict that much damage due to the high altitude in fairness. Uh, decent bit of damage over here at all. Uh, it's not too bad, 25. As is it, we can obviously keep that up. We have severe storms over here to actually cause us problems too. A little bit of damage over here to Pescadores. Uh, what are we seeing here then? Hmm. In fairness, there's actually not a lot over here at Formosa. Couple fighters over here at Hong Kong. Uh, there's aircraft over here at Canton, but I don't know what for it is. Couple aircraft out here. Saigon, we're looking at 47 bombs, 55 auxiliaries. Yeah, not that much. They probably have transferred them elsewhere, to be fair. Okay. So, uh, I mean, this is where we'd start looking towards the carriers and etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at Midway. Uh, sorry, not Midway, at Pell. Go ahead and turn that back on. There we go. Yes, it is going to take some time for this all to be loaded up, in all honesty. Wow, do they really load up three marine divisions there? Oh no, this is the other force. Right, okay. Is it? Oh no, it is the divisions. Interesting. Okay, wow. That is actually impressive there. So we have a board here, 43,000 men. Impressive. So we have thunderstorms over Pearl at this moment in time. Okay. I had a little bit of trouble trying to get the amphibious headquarters to load up properly. It's kind of annoying. Uh, the AKs here are complete, apparently. These guys are great. They're very, very useful in amphibious operations there. Okay, well, actually, um, why are you unloading? And actually, have you loaded? Have you loaded that? They're not doing anything. Yeah, there's a huge monk of supply, supply there. I'm tempted to actually have these uh, landing ships actually load up supply. It's probably not a bad idea. Considering I'm going to have them move out, might as well have as much blood with me as possible. Okay. Wow, they actually loaded up significantly faster than I would have imagined. Yeah, the... 
the, the amount of ships here is just unbelievable. Like 452 APs, 120D, 59 AO. It's just, ah, oh, so much. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> right, wow. Jesus Christ. I mean, that is the power of a size 8 port with how much naval support? 673 naval support, yeah. That's crazy. Need some staff members. <laughs> it would be nice. It would generally be nice. Okay. I'm thankful this is already set up. The only issue is they're not set to react, which does hurt my brain. Uh, we'll have that set up for next time, really. So we're just getting a sense of things here. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at the pools. That's going to be something I would like to know about. So, aircraft replacement pool. Let's see. Uh, aircraft with pools. Do, 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 do. Active aircraft. We'll go ahead and take a look here at the heavy bomber. Right. Yeah, B-17s have more or less been phased out by this point, I'd imagine. Uh, so we don't have that much in the way of production. So 30 privateers then, okay. Right, replacement brain. Okay. Hmm. Right, okay. Yeah, so all of these other aircraft really aren't. Yeah, that's fine. We do have significant amounts of them in the pool, like 406 Hellcats out of the F6F5. That's just. There's a lot of aircraft here. So many bloody aircraft. What do we actually get in terms of arrivals, man? That's something we can check before the end of the stream here, actually. So, group reinforcements. Oh, wow, we actually do get some B17Gs. Cool. I don't know what we'd much do with them. Hey, Devendo Hauser, good to have you, my friend. Uh, so we do get the B-17Gs there, we get additional B-29s here at Tinian. So we'll go for the night bombing then of, I'm going to say Osaka, uh, considering the fact that there are less actual defenders than there are in Tokyo. That's no problem, my dude. Okay. Plenty of B-29s there. <laughs> We're just looking forward to using those bad boys. Actually, the Lancasters have been rather intriguing to use there. I'd like to see how they go. I'll go ahead and take a look then at ground reinforcements. Right. Ah, the Zippo. <laughs> I like it. And they would come in handy, actually. So we do have another division here. 14 days at San Francisco. Uh, another division there. So we're looking at a good number of actual troops arriving at San Francisco. Another two divisions actually would be very nice. Call out is lovely. Yeah, look at those two forties there. <laughs> the 155 gun motor carriage. Yeah, the M12s there. <laughs> I love it. Uh, the rocket arts are absolutely beautiful. Right, so we do get a significant amount of additional assets like that. And this is it. It does make me wonder how much we'd actually need. Could we actually go for operations against Hokkaido and Kyushu? Uh, we probably could, considering the amount of assets we have. So we're looking at a couple of units over here, then 10 units over here at Sapporo. Uh, Sa uh, Sapporo. Two here. And we have four here, okay. I reckon we could probably do that. We do see apparently only one unit over here at Parmashiro Jibra. We don't say have to close and actually run uh, increased amounts of reconnaissance in this area. Three units over here. A couple aircraft, a couple ships over there. The amount of information we get from magic is just crazy good.
Yep, yeah, okay. Let's take a look at what we have here in Manila, then. That's a lot of divisions. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of... <laughs> that's a lot of assault value. That is indeed a lot there. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I think we probably would have enough, actually. I think we probably have enough. Right, so you can see they're actually playing for the wacky. Oh, they actually have the... Uh, that's pretty good, man, actually. Right, so what we could actually do then is have this uh, sorted out. We'll have this sorted out when we do the next stream, really. Yeah, but these guys are such a target. So, Kanoya. That's interesting. Whereabouts are these actually intended for, then? And Awaki's over here. Well, Awaki. Huh. It's quite useful to have that 100 prep, but it's interesting considering here, then. I mean, clear terrain, I am. Hmm. Oh, I don't know if there's going to be an extreme. I'm hoping there'll be an extreme. Uh, but I'm thinking about having this, uh, if not carry on, on the uh, channel, on my own channel anyway. Be one of those of a back burner one, considering that I have so much to keep up with now, it's actually getting kind of crazy. <laughs> but it'd be kind of fun. Something we could do every now and then. Right, where? I mean, that's not... That'd be a hell of a bold move there to land. I reckon what it would be worthwhile doing then is if we take a look. I mean, we do have Iwo Jima. The issue is these forces are deployed in such a way as to logistically... Yeah, logistics would be nice. <laughs> yeah, uh, as I was saying, logistically speaking, the forces are set up over here then. I mean, maybe we do go for four modes today. It could be an interesting one. We do have a lot of visions there, but uh, it comes down to how much it's actually worth for us, really. We have 300 here as in value to allies. Uh, 225 there. 85 there. 70. 35. Okay. 80. So there is value to form most of, but not a significant amount of value. But still worthwhile. I mean, there's still a few hundred victory points there. And what are we at right now? Yeah, we need a lot of score there. That's for damn sure. But there we go, we are out of time here for tonight. I'd like to thank you all for watching. It's been fantastic to be here once again. Uh, I hope people have enjoyed this so far. Have been able to get everything done. I did have a couple hours in uh, before the turn started, sorry, b before the actual stream started, to get some work done. But you can definitely see that uh, the game's not a quick one, it's not an easy one to show. But I think something like this probably does work better. At least you guys can actually see it, at least we can actually run the turns when we like. So that works for us. And, yeah, I suppose it works. But I'd like to say a big thank you, so, until next time. I was going to do an outro there, but I thought I'd just have that little bit of a pause. <laughs> Keep people wondering. There we go. So, big thank you to Sleeper and Make sure this Games for allowing me to be here once again. And if you guys have enjoyed this, you know where to find me on YouTube at XTRG. And, uh, do me a favour, if you could follow me here on Twitch as well, that'd be excellent. So that is XTRG on Twitch too. I shall see you guys in the future. Goodbye for now.